Hello, welcome pen friends. Welcome to uh, the progress report for November 2023 uh, for Chris's Ink Pens. Now, I started with eight pens and I've added two more. So I've got 10 to talk about with, with uh, you know, sample writing and the whole nine yards. So I added in this um, Sailor 1911L. It is a uh, cocktail series Asian Way pen. And actually, I have the ink here, too. I put in Monteverde Horizon Blue in this, and it's wonderful. It is a fine medium nib, and you'll see the writing samples. But um, this is a pen friend gift from pen friend um, MS, and uh, I just couldn't not put it in. I inked it up. I couldn't wait any longer. Uh, and it's really, a, really surprised me. So that was uh, the one addition. And then the second edition, whoops, let me make sure that's capped right, is this lovely little platinum, uh, it's a vintage pocket pen from the 1960s. Such a great pen for, for me. And this was a pen friend gift from pen friend PH. Thank you very much, um, everyone who's just been showering me for the last seven years with pens. Um, I have a platinum black cartridge in this, and I think this is a, a fine nib. But it doesn't actually say. It actually does say that it's a, I think it's a 14 karat gold nib. And it's just really, really nice. Um, small and, and pockety. And I love pocket pens. So anyway, I, I haven't met too many pens that I don't love. But that, I wanted to tell you that before we get started. And then I wanted to do the report card first because at least... Four or five times I've forgotten to do the report card. So we'll just run through that and that will give a, a, either a reminder or if you haven't seen the other um, video then you'll know what pens I'm talking about as we flip through all of my writing samples and stuff like that. So first up, the, and by the way this is all A and A plus. In other words I've been super happy with the pen and ink and nib combinations all the way across the board this month. So it, you can imagine it's been a fun time this first half of the month writing. And I expect uh, some of these are going to be empty and <laughs> have to either be refilled or we'll see what's next. But the first pen is the Banu Euphoria with a broad nib in the pink uh, Gaiva with Robert Oster Tranquility. It's a ink that I absolutely adore. And the minute I saw this pen, I wanted to see it in here, even though this, this really looks a lot more kind of like a traditional green to me. And this is a teal, but that's okay. That's the ink that came to my mind. So I, it's an A plus. It's just a joy to write with. And I, I love it. I'm, let's see how we're doing for ink. I haven't actually checked in on it to see. I've written a lot with it though. Yeah, I've used, whoops. It's hard for you to probably see. Maybe you can. I've used almost the whole converter, so I'm not surprised. It is a nice broad nib, and it's just been just amazing. I've written a lot of pen pal letters this month already, and I have now, I've, I got two letters in yesterday, because I only had one. I had one in my reply pile, and then I got a letter the day before yesterday, and two so I've, I've total got four in there, but that's that represents a really fast turnaround lately. So for me anyway, anything under two weeks is fast for me, I think. Um, so next up is the Pilot Prera with the, uh, I guess it's cursive medium, but it's just a really nice kind of an italic nib. And this is the Ivory Prera. Um, this is another gift, but I think and rather than go through all of that, again, like I did last month. I'm going to make sure it's all in the description box. So, But this was my first prayer, so it was a big deal for me to... Um, I've tried the Pilot Nibs before because I've had them on the Metropolitan and the Kakuno, but I had never had the pen body of prayer, and I like the size. I like everything. So I gave it an A+. Plus, um, and I made that note, superior nibs. You know, I just, I like their nibs already, so it wouldn't be hard for me to know that I was going to enjoy this. Um, it reminds me of the Wing Sung, I think it's 3003, but the nibs on, on these pilots, you can't compare, really. Um, and they have, the, the Wing Sungs have some pretty good nibs. But I like this Monteverde Canyon Rust. Mine may have kind of darkened, 
over time. It's uh, It's been with me since almost the beginning, it's, and it's decanted into a smaller bottle now, but I'm thinking, because it, it looked redder in the beginning, and now it looks a lot more brown, but I'm really loving how it looks, so I'm going to finish it just as it is, and I love it. Um, yeah, the their Pilot, the CM nibs are perfect for me, because I don't feel as that my writing looks as dorky with with the smaller, um, the thinner stub. It just seems a little more suited. And, and at first I didn't get that. Like, I liked the flow of the 1.5, but I didn't like how my letter, my writing looked. So if you kind of don't get along good with a wider stub, you might try, uh, you know, a CM or even a 1.1 in the Lamy. Um, just try out different stubs to see how it goes. Okay, so we're like we're batting at A plus all the way here <laughs> so far. So next is the Diplomat Arrow. And I put cross black in here because I'm very familiar with how it writes, the, the ink writes. And it's just been excellent. Uh, wait a minute, extra fine, right? Yeah, that's what keeps kind of surprising me that it's an extra fine and I'm, I'm really, really excited about it. In fact, I'm gonna show you, I was a little bit bummed because it's a little bit big for the for here for the Hobonichi. Um, right now, I have another Prera in it that came with that uh, the gift from the anonymous pen friend. But I tried putting it putting the arrow in here, and I think it just is a little bit too chubby. Like when you go to close it, well, no, it'll work. I had it turned differently before, so maybe I will be able to use it in here. I hope so. I kind of like quick draw with my pens, and because it zips, I can just put it in there and not worry. Because um, that was what I was about to do, was transfer it. After, after this, I will have the pens where they are actually going to be and not right on my desk. Um, I will be putting this in the Hobonichi case, I think. Um, it's just reliable. It's super smooth. And it just feels really high quality. I thought I'd have trouble with the uh, grip section, but I grip it way down on on the uh, outer ring, and I haven't gotten ink on me so far, and I haven't had any trouble. So I was surprised by that. It has a wonderful snap cap. It's just excellent. So, and you can see, I think, right here, where it's just real flowy. Uh, it's been great. Um, this has been, it's been like a, like Christmas all in November here. Um, the next pen is the Banu Briolette with a fine nib in luminous amber. Another gorgeous, gorgeous pen. Um, and they say that it glows in the dark, which I need to come out here sometime at night and look and, you know, check that out. But it's got the little gold, uh, not gold, but gold colored um, nib and it's just amazing. And in that, I have the Pilot Roshizuku Horsetail Brown, which is quite reddish, too. So that's interesting. You'll see where, where I did the uh, water brush in the writing. It did really, it's, it's like I wrote brown, but it was red that was coming out. So I gave that an A+, plus too, because it's just beautiful, reliable. It's a, a super fine nib. I mean, so excited about that. It says Schmidt. So... I've got an awful lot to learn because I haven't had very many Schnip, Schmidt <laughs> nib units. Um, I had one on my Heinz Custom that I won from Larry, and that's pretty much it until I started with Banu pens. But uh, what I like is that you can you you unscrew the nib units, and so your number five nib unit or your number six nib unit. So if you start getting alternating the nib sizes that you buy, you can swap them within your two uh, different types of pens, like the Talisman and the Euphoria, they take the six, and then um, uh, the other one that I'm gonna show you in a minute, the, the Scepter, and this uh, Briolette, I think is how you say it, it takes the number five. So just, wow, look at that, four A pluses. So everything I was reaching for now, granted, with the Diplomat, with the extra fine, I didn't want to write letters with it as much. I wanted to make notes and work in my planners and stuff. That's why I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have that for a solid two weeks in the, uh, with my little Hobonichi weeks because I've got a lot of planning to do um, coming up here. So, let's see. <laughs> Next is 
an old favorite, but this is my new Lamy Vista that I replaced, the one where I wore off all the, the letters, because I'm keeping that older one for shimmer inks and for all of my testing. And I wanted one that was sort of like a, you know, Chris's private collection uh, pen that I wasn't going to beat on you know, mercilessly for seven years, you know, making things. So I gave this an A, and I think it would have got an A plus if the ink was just a little tiny bit lighter, but I, I love it. It flows good. It's Laban Athena. It's got complexity and it's nice. In fact, I wondered why, but really it's kind of nuanced between A and A plus. So you have to keep that in mind, but it's just wonderful. Uh, smooth and just the right, I like the Lamy broad nib so much and it, it had plenty of, uh, you know, juiciness and flow to it. So no complaints at all. In fact, I've written quite a bit of letters with this. And during the rainy days, it kind of was a, <laughs> it felt like the right color for the, we had five solid rainy days in a row after we got our roof. So we felt very good, happy about that. So next up is an old uh, standby for me, which is a Twisby Gull with a broad nib. And I put Pelican Edelstein Star Ruby, which is just gorgeous. And I think I have eye problems because some, this is definitely pink. But some days I look at it and I see reddish. So I don't know if it's the amount of ink that's laid down or what. But I gave this an A and I was wondering, okay, I think I get it now. I said nib A+, plus. pen and total combination A. So I'm not quite as crazy about the Twisby Goes as I was in the beginning as a pen, but the the two I got with the broad nibs on the go were just the best Twisby broad nibs I've ever had. And I don't dislike the go. It's nice and light and I love the grip, but I know now about all the rigmarole with, you know, taking care of it over the long term. So maybe, maybe I just... Uh, so it's still an A, and that's wonderful, right? I mean, we're getting really nitpicky there, but <laughs> and I just absolutely love this ink. In fact, I was thinking about getting this, maybe even transferring this nib right over onto one of my Ecos. Um, not sure which one, though, because I don't have a pink one, but I have uh, like a clear one that would look really nice on. So another A. And then next up, okay, this one took me by surprise. Um, now, I already knew that I liked Jin Hao 100. Um, they're so pretty and uh, they're gorgeous. They, it looks like a super expensive pen, but I think it's in the under $25 range, something like that. And um, I really kind of am naughty because it came with an extra fine nib on it, which I do intend to use. But I, I right away put my broad Yo-Wo, my favorite broad Yo-Wo nib on it because I wanted a nice juicy uh, broad nib for letter writing. Uh, but I want to experiment with that extra fine nib too because that's part of my, um, that's been one of the biggest things this year was to uh, not be so stuck on just broad nibs. Um, but it took me by surprise how really awesome the, this Diamine Florida Blue is in in this book in this book yeah in this pen it's just you know it's a joy to look at and write with and uh, this came on my serendipity I probably said that a hundred thousand times I, I just wish I had ten more just like it but um, the the broad uh, goulet nibs are excellent, but they just don't quite match up to this uh, nib so this is a favorite nib but after seeing how it looks with this ink, um, I think this will be a permanent like combination. I may try the extra fine number six nib in a different pen body. That's how much I like it. I really don't want to disturb it. And that's saying a lot because that nib has traveled around and around and <laughs> around all my pens. So next up is the, uh, I'm going to push this up just in case, the last of the original eight that I chose for November. And that is the Banu Scepter 1. Um... Oh, I put cat there because all that disturbance was from a cat hair. It, it's nothing to do with the pen. Uh, and it, I have a broad nib unit in it. I think it, it came with a fine. I'm, I can't remember. But I've got that put put aside for the moment. And um, 
Sailor 50 States Illinois is the ink, which was also gifted to me by a different person than sent the pen. And this is, this is, we're right back up to an A+. Plus. Did I say that on the one above? Good grief. This one got an A plus too, just excellent. I guess you'd know that anyway, even if I didn't say it, but it's here. <laughs> um, and I just ha have to say, this pen is so dazzling. It's a wonder you can write anything. It's so pretty. Um, you end up kind of mesmerized by it. But I managed, I managed to write really well with it. And it's just such a great writer. I'm thinking about, um, actually I was thinking how nice the, Pel the pelican ink would look in here, although I'm not great on that. Well, you know, it has a lot of pink. And I do think any pink ink would look great in it. But even something darker that's between a pink and a red would be good too. So I'm thinking about December, how, you know, there's a lot of options that I could clean it out and um, let's see how far we are with the ink. Okay, we've got a little bit, got a little bit more in this one than the, the last one we checked, but still it's not quite half, so, and I filled them right up knowing that they had broad nibs on them. So, this is just excellent. A plus. Beautiful all the way around. Okay, um, I better get going because we got uh, all of the individual pages too. So next is the Sailor 1911 uh, L. I think it's a fine medium nib, Cocktail Series Asian Way. It's a really, really pretty elegant pen. Um, I was leery of it at first because I have had some of the uh, budget sailor pens and I just couldn't get a smooth, I couldn't write with them. And But this not the case with this at all, and we'll see that in the writing sample. And I gave it an A. Let's see. I said I love this more than I expected to. The FM nib is very expressive, has some spring. Okay, I'm adjusting to the nib, and I think that's better suited to talk about once we get over into the writing sample. I can probably show that better there, but, but definitely, this really, really surprised me. Um, and it's, just, it's another example of how I, I never would have purchased a, a sailor um, in that category, but I, having the chance to write with it has shown me something I, I wouldn't have known. So last but not least is the gorgeous little uh, platinum vintage pocket pen. And I, like I said, I think it's a fine nib. I doesn't say. It just it has P for platinum. It, it could be an extra fine. So I had put like, and somewhere I put a question mark. It could be extra fine. But uh, being platinum, it's possible that this was a, a zero 03, like a fine, you know, because they, they have really... Oh, and I was going to show you, it, it uh, posts so nicely. Whoops. <laughs> I didn't have it lined up, but it's just gorgeous. And it's really charming knowing that it comes from my actual error. I'm uh, minted in the 60s as well. So um, I gave it an A. I said this is a fun pen, and I'm so happy with it. It's really, really nice. Now, it has a, you know, really fine line. So I was experimenting on my grocery list and other little papers, and it seems like it'll write with this platinum black cartridge on anything without bleeding through, at least so far. And uh, I just love it. Um, it's literally a pocket pen, which, you know, I love pocket pens. So now I think we can get into the actual, you know, writing samples. Okay, and I did an inventory here, which I'm going to talk about more later. This is this is all my Lamy inventory, which is very, it was really helpful to me. So I decided to put it in here where I wouldn't lose it. Like I would literally be able to go, even once I finish this, I'll know it was in this one because that's how my brain works. <coughs> and I, 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 uh, I can jot in the very front. I don't remember whether this even had an index. Well, it could be an index here, but no. Okay, because we're almost ready to finish this one. But let's hop over here. This is the Banu Euphoria in broad nib and uh, Robert Oster Tranquility. Just super, super nice. And I, I didn't even start these um, ink journal pages until after our roof was completed. So we had our roof uh, re-roofed, you know, new shingles and all the underlayment and everything November 7th and 8th. And 
I was so like, <laughs> I was, it was such an intense time. So I started after all of that was completed and it was like five days of rain. So it was perfect for that. But this, this has shading. It's gorgeous. Um, it doesn't match the pen, but I don't care. I just like it so much. And um, I've been writing with it on, let's see. I've been trying my letters out on this paper, which is new to me. Let me grab the paper that, yeah. So this is a, I don't know what all that is, or a Yamamoto bank paper writing pad. And I, I really like it. And uh, some of the pens even write better on this than they do on Tomoe River paper. Uh, there's a little bit of variety in that, but and this pen uh, writing pad was sent by pen friend MS too, and I've really been enjoying that. And um, the other paper I've written on is the the everyday pad, the Galen Leather 52 GSM, which I'm very very familiar with that paper, so I know what to expect with that. <coughs> but this has done great on everything I've tried it on, and this is 68 GSM, Tomoe River paper by made by the same people that are now Lockbee. Uh, they make the Lockbee, um, uh, these, the journals that are uh, like pamphlets. And this was last year's ink vent, so I headed out to see what I did last year. I couldn't believe it. You know, I always think to myself, oh, I didn't put enough effort in. Gosh, I, you know, that, that was my report card to myself. And then I pulled this out and I thought, no, I really did explore every ink. Last year, of course, Pen Friend Marilyn sent me samples, and I was highly motivated to make that worth his time, you know, that he had sent me those samples, you know. And, but I was like, if that's the way my mind works, then I might as well not listen to anything I think. Just, <laughs> just go on down the road. Don't listen to any of the thoughts, because it looks great in retrospect. So I'd, I'd love to do that well this year with the ink event. So a great pen, just so com comfortable with it and um, just wonderful. Okay, so next up on this side here where it says Sunday, this is the Pilot Prera in the ivy, I ivory with uh, Monteverde Canyon Rust. And uh, this was part of the anonymous pen friend, the box of pens that was sent to me. And it's just wonderful. I love it. I probably already said so much about, about it, but... Uh, it's funny how that lifts, it, it is a rusty kind of color, but it looks brown to my eye and then it lifts up very reddish, almost a peachy, I don't know, kind of a different color. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure uh, inks can kind of darken over time, even in the bottle with a nice tight lid. But I like everything about this combination. I was going on about what I was listening to and watching. Oh, I saw a wonderful Polish movie dubbed into English, Forgotten Love, about a surgeon and, and a, a, just a wonderful story on Netflix. If you get a chance, it, it was wonderful. So, <laughs> I'm running out of steam here. Next up is the Diplomat Arrow, and I was just, I wanted to find something to just copy down in printing, so I copied down a series that I have read um, by a Texas uh, author, and I, it really, really prints just as well as it does cursive. In fact, with a really, really fine nib like this, and it's extra fine, kind of almost up to a regular fine. Um, no, but it is very thin uh, line width, but it's it's super smooth. I like printing, my printing better in, in a pen like this. I said perfect for the Hobonichi weeks. We're going to find out because the next two weeks it's going to be exclusively in there. In fact, that's where it's going right now. So we're going to move the little prayer out and put it in there because I want to really, really put it through. It, and isn't that something? I've only got a couple months left with that color and I'm going to navy blue so I can change, change pens and colors and everything else, I think. So it's super smooth, it's a joy to write with, and I never would have, I would have not probably tried it. <clears throat> it was just enough outside of my question of whether or not I'd be able to hold it and write with it that I, I probably might not have ever gone there, so. Okay, so the next one is the Banu Briolette. I'm probably gonna say it six different ways. Huh, 
<laughs> it's interesting that, okay, the Canyon Rust here is definitely not the same as this, but they kind of remind me of each other quite a bit. You get almost a maroon color coming out of this brown and you get a different, almost a like Southwest color. Yeah, that's a really nice color. Um, it's just a stunning pen and it writes really well. I do, and I think brown or like say bronze or like, cause this was the other color I considered for this was Robert Oster bronze. I thought that would be really nice. Uh, I don't want to do a sparkly shimmer gold or anything in a pen unless I put, unless I switch them and put like the broad nib on it. That's a possibility too. Yeah, and I, I already went over this fact that it's so nice to be able to switch those nib units out without any stress over having to pull the nib. Um, I said downstrokes are slightly thicker. But there, you can't argue with that though, as long as there's no skipping, there's no um, lack of smoothness. It's just wonderful. And I said that I thought it had a little bit of flex. Maybe, maybe flex might not be the word. Um, bounce might be a better word because, you know, we don't want people thinking that it's billed as flex nib. It's, it's bouncy. I don't know whether that's spelled right. <laughs> and when I wrote this, I said, 2 p.m. still raining. <laughs> so cool. Okay. So next up was the, the Vista, Lamy Vista with the Laban Athena. And it's a little bit dark, but for any kind of um, emphasis or using the uh, water brush, this is the water brush I like the best, it just really works well. And it, it definitely looks gray there. So... Oh, I made my lasagna soup. Well, it's not mine. It came out of a soups and stew cookbook that I got years ago. And I didn't keep the cookbook, but I kept the recipe. That was the one recipe. I, I really like that. It's a hearty soup and uh, kind of a comfort food, not something you'd have every day. But. Okay, and then we've got uh, <laughs> bright and shiny here. We've got the Twisby Go with the uh, Pelican Edelstein Star Ruby, just beautiful. And of course I didn't gauge my letter size right, so I went way over onto this page and I didn't let it bother me. Uh, just smooth and never lets up. Like the flow in this one, that's why, that's probably another good reason to leave it alone because once I move it, who knows um, if I move the nib, whether it'll be the same, but it's just gorgeous and it flows really well. So I, you gotta love anything that results in that kind of pretty uh, letters. And over here, I made a mistake. I started to put the wrong ink. I wrote Monteverde Horizon Blue, but it was definitely Florida Blue in this pen. <sighs> Those two are easy to confuse, even though face to face, they do not look the same at all. Like Florida Blue is clearly lighter than uh, Horizon Blue. But they do have a, or they remind me of each other. So <laughs> I got confused and I liked how our soup came out. Just, yeah, this is excellent for letter writing. Just excellent for anything you want to do, but for letter writing, especially for my great big handwriting. Um, and it makes me want to get out the other one I have, which is the Koi finish. And go ahead and, and search for a dedicated uh, broad nib for that one because I would use red ink in it. I can see using the Pelican Star Ruby uh, in the other one like this. So those kind of things really inspire me. Like the ink and the pen combination just really, that can really fire up um, any kind of boredom or any kind of, you know, <laughs> uh, dullness in the hobby. It's just not necessary. Once you start, you know, moving nibs around and stuff, it's a lot of fun, so. Okay, then this one was the Banu Scepter, and it's got that 50 States, Illinois. Let's see, here it is. And, you know, of course, on the surface, it looks so dark, and it is, it's, it does seem to have some sheen. Here's the chromatography. That's the only chromatography I did this time, because it was the only ink that I wasn't so familiar with. And it, it came out interesting. It, it stayed kind of steady here. Then you got purple. Then you've got kind of a kind of a bright blue at the top. But it's just a nice ink. 
Um, sometimes a darker blue like this will seem chalky or, or not quite flowy enough for me, but this is flowy enough for me, definitely. Oh, I had lost my chromatography strips and then I found them right in the desk drawer. Just they weren't where I had had them before, so. The cool, damp dark has gotten to me. Oh, yeah, I felt achy that day. Ooh, it was just, it just went down to the bones, I guess, the cold. the Not cold, it was just cool. But it was also very damp, and I think that's what got to me. <laughs> Let's see, what else did I write about? Ruby and gold on this. Oh, yeah, I wrote how many different, Ink, you know, colors I can see using in this pen. Definitely three main colorways. And then you could go off into ruby, red, pink, magenta even if you wanted to, and bright blue and darker blue. So I went, you know, kind of darker blue this time. And it's just gorgeous. And then the 1911, the Sailor 1911, there it's, I don't have the vocabulary yet to explain the difference in how this writes you know, because I'm so used to, like, a nail hard, like, fine nib, like, or not fine, because I don't use them, but medium, say, in the uh, regular steel nibs. Okay, so, anyway, I, I, I have a hard time describing the difference, because it's smooth, and it may be, let's see. maybe has, you know, slightly wider, and I don't put a lot of pressure. I mean, I'm aware this is a gold nib and I don't want to do anything to it. It's so nice. And it's not just nice for cursive, but it's really nice for my printing too. So I think that uh, this is outside of what I normally use enough that I'll have to write with it longer to know, you know, is it is it a forever kind of uh, writing experience that I, I want to have? But it's it surprised me. It really did. Because I thought, sailor, oh no. And now I have two other um, little sailors that are smaller to try out, which will be coming soon. I'm not sure because I had this brilliant idea about December. And I may not, it may not be December or, or it may be because... Um, <laughs> I have a bad tendency to overbook myself with pens, but we'll see. But anyway, coming up soon, I have two more to try for, that came in that box from the anonymous person. And this is just wonderful. I, I, I love it. And that's a two week, you know, well, not maybe. No, I had it. I had it almost from the beginning inked up, but maybe not quite two weeks. So. And then last but not least, by any means, is the little platinum vintage pocket pen. Let's see. I don't even know. Maybe I should be having that closer. It's hard to see. It's definitely hard for me to see because I'm looking over the top of my glasses. But I just am charmed by this. Um, it's definitely my error. And, and I just I love pocket pens that do this but without having to do the... Um, you know, without having to screw them. Whoops, I just loosened it. Okay, I'm having OCD about how to put this on here. Okay, <laughs> there. <laughs> it doesn't have to go any certain way, but according to me, I guess it does. So I like my writing best in printing with this, which is perfect because this would be carried around, write on the grocery list, jot down little things. I carry index cards with me everywhere. Because I only carry a very small, like, I can't call it a purse. It's just, it's a sling thing that I could put my phone and wallet, and that's it. And it has an outer pocket. It's the one made by, um, well, it's a koozie case with the strap on it, basically. And I use it for um, just everyday carry. Um, so I said also for calendar entries, which I've been doing, because Manuel has a calendar that he would appreciate if I write major things that I have going on so that it doesn't completely take him by surprise. Like the people come in to check um, routine maintenance for the furnace. He needs to know those things. So I was jotting on it with this, and it was perfect. Yeah. Um, this was just a big surprise, you know, um, Something I didn't even know about. I didn't know they, they made them. And then I was looking for a video because I figured, oh, I'll go and watch somebody's video. And there aren't very many. There, I think Chris Rapp has one, but the pen looks different. Um, 
is similar though, and I'll probably watch his. And then I got distracted by watching Kike Crafts had one on her little lucky one that had um, it had little shamrocks on it. So it, it was an interesting one, but it was from the 60s too. And hers had the same uh, like shape around the nib. It was just a different colorway, that's all. So thank you very much to Penfriend um, PH. I really like this. Okay, so I think we'll head over to the library to have just a quick chat. And um, let's see, I usually, gosh, I, there's no way I can make a prediction this time. I don't think about which pen is going to end up being my favorite because there's just so much here to love. Like I can't even, it'd be like trying to pick your favorite child, I think. I mean, it's that, it's that wild. Um, and it's interesting because you would think automatically maybe it would be, you know, one of the really flashy Banu's. But I I've, I've just, it's crazy about the little prayer and the nib on it. And the size of that pen just makes it so convenient too. So I don't have a favorite on, in here. <laughs> and, and there's enough differences that it puts them in different categories anyway. Like this one could be, I could carry anywhere and not really worry about losing it and stuff. And yet I would be sad if I lost that nib. Oh my gosh. I don't know. But I'm going to carry this one with me over to the library because this is a little jotter and it's perfect for what we're going to do. So <laughs> see you there. There, I'm over in my library, which is a nice place to be in the winter because this tends to be a warm room and it tends to be warm in the summer and warm in the winter, which is very lucky. So um, I don't know, I guess it gets the morning sun and then, yeah, that, that seems to be what does it, I guess. And I, I like natural light anyway, but I don't fully get natural light, but there's two windows kind of to my right. So Anyway, I, I like it that it's not, uh, you know, hot, hot anymore, and I can be in here with my books and really enjoy it. So, as I mentioned, we got a, our, our roof re-roofed. So, the last time we had done it, you know, got shingles and the whole nine yards, was uh, <laughs> 1999. And I remembered that it was 20-year shingles, so I knew we were kind of out we were out there on the timing, but the last couple of, I think actually the last uh, storm that came through saw uh, some of the dried shingles, you know, little pieces flew off. And so it's been bothering me so bad since then. And it was such a uh, conundrum trying to figure out what company might be good, you know, how you can evaluate a company for roofing when I, it's all changed. I could no longer get the one I got back then because they're retired, they're gone. You know, and then you've got your really, really big ones that are really busy and they're mostly doing new construction and doing large jobs. So I had a just absolutely, the just astounding good luck <laughs> because our um, neighbor had called, I don't know, five or six different companies and I saw them come and measure and I saw all that going on so I knew and I felt really happy for them because I'd seen him and his son up on the roof you know trying to repair and you know trying to get it to not leak and everything and I thought oh what a problem to have and thank god we hadn't reached that point but I knew that wasn't going to be next you know if we didn't get something done so then he uh, several months later hired a company and I live right next door. So I watched the entire process. I watched them uh, arrive with their uh, little, uh, I guess it's, it's like a thing they pull with the big truck with their, their stuff and they left it. And I thought, oh, work is going to start pretty soon. So the next morning at like 7, 7.30, they started. And I saw them come and I saw all the work happening, literally. From my backyard, I could sit back there under the tree and literally watch how they did everything. And so I thought, I would like that company. I mean, and even after, because it took a day and a half over there. And even after all of the noise and all of the, you know, what is normally terrible to have that happening next door you know it's noisy and disruptive and the whole nine yards I just knew from watching them that I wanted to see if we could get them and I wondered you know about the price and so on and so forth anyway um so but 
who, ha, when does that ever happen, right? The, the roof prior to theirs that we witnessed being done was so bad that we were just so disgusted because it took like, I don't know, five or six days. These guys would get up on the roof behind us and they would start uh, the loud music, you know, and they, they were... I don't know if they were drinking or just taking a break or whatever. They'd yell in and, and the music was loud. And, and it's bad enough with all the, the banging. So it just seemed like it was never going to finish. So we thought, well, either they're the owners or they, they've they got, you know, it just was hard to figure out, you know, who was in charge and when it was going to get done. So the horror nightmare in my mind was like, oh, I do not want something like that happening. So anyway, when they when he came here to do the bid for us, you know, he got up on the roof and uh, measured and took pictures unknown to me, <clears throat> pictures of absolutely everything. And then uh, part of the appointment was coming down here to show us everything and give his opinion. And definitely it was time to get it done, you know. And yet he said everything was, you know, appeared to be steady. And uh, he walked all around up there testing and checking. And But I could see all of the, the hardware and the, the, you know, the little vents were rusted and things like that. And you could, there was no question. It was almost like I had gone up there, crawled around and... You know, I, I don't do that anymore. But when I was 28 years old, I was up there patching, doing what our neighbor was doing, you know, <laughs> a year ago or whatever. <clears throat> I would go up there with my father-in-law because it was just him and me to try to figure out what to do. My, Manuel is very scared of heights. So anyway, we felt in good hands and then and the bid was right and the timing was right. And they did it in a day and a half and... And uh, just, you know, it's it's a big upgrade in, in the type of shingles and everything. We got Owens Corning, you know, it's like a 50-year thing. And uh, it's got 130 mile per hour wind rating, which is really nice for here. I mean, this house with the roof that, I'm, that we just got rid of went through, um, you know, what was, what ended up being just the tail end of um, the big hurricane that went through Rockport. Now I, I've gone completely... Of course, I know the name of the hurricane, but I, I've forgotten it. But it was it was bad. It was like, even here, we had 80 mile per hour winds that were really high, and it was awful. And so, um, any feeling of even a little bit of security during a storm like that is, is going to help. But anyway, so it was a big deal. And <clears throat> then, so they, they had given us a date, but then they moved it up a day uh, sooner because there was rain coming on Thursday afternoon. Well, it was really good because they were here Tuesday and, and they finished at 1 p.m. Wednesday. And then by 10 a.m. Thursday, we were having heavy rain and it was a real relief to have that done. And, you know, you don't realize till after how much you were constantly worrying about something. Like, you know, it just is a... And, you know, beforehand, we were, we were kind of talking, tossing things around, thinking how many other things there are to do, you know, like that need to be done. But the way I saw it, because I would go outside and go all the way around with my binoculars, and I knew it was not an option. Like it just wasn't an option anymore. I, there's no way I wanted to go through another, you know, season of wind and, and rain without a new roof. So, <clears throat> we, but I thought, you know, it's, it's not going to feel a whole lot better because there are other things. Not not quite as glaring as that, but that we know have to be replaced and done. But um, I guess now we now we feel really, really good about it, of course. But uh, I, I guess the lesson there, too, is just <laughs> you, you just got to do what you can do and keep on saving and keep on working toward the next thing. You know, you don't even sometimes know exactly which thing is going to be next because sometimes it will cut the line you know on you like something will break but anyway we're real happy about that and then next month I turn 60 so that's the other topic the topic that I can't seem to escape is that all of a sudden I'm having like a lot of uh life review stuff going on like like thinking okay Am I reading the right things? Am I doing the right things? Am I going to be like, is this really, you know? And so, you know, I've even been putting under the microscope every aspect of the hobby. 
but it comes out pretty good because I love writing letters and I feel that connecting with people through writing letters and even through these videos, although, you know, like for a long time, I've had a sort of a call to do it a little differently. And it's not to like uh, say, well, I can't spend money on pen things or I don't want to spend money on pen things anymore. But there is kind of a strong call in me to uh, get away from the materialistic part of it and really, really dig down and enjoy, you know, um, just enjoy the writing. Because there are days when I enjoy tinkering and changing out nibs and doing all kinds of, you know, nib smoothing. and But those aren't as many because I'm impatient to get to the writing, to the journaling and to the spiritual growth, to the, like, trying to understand myself better and trying to improve, you know, uh, if I even can, and if that matters, which most days it does, you know, so that's, that's kind of where I've been at, like, um, and I've never had a birthday trigger that before, never, in fact, <coughs> I can remember my really close friend when she was turning 50, she was just having a fit about it, and I couldn't believe it, I, I was maybe 52 at the time, so I thought, well, I didn't even blink at 50, I didn't even think about it, like, it just wasn't on my radar to worry about that number. And I certainly never thought about it at 40. I was so busy at 40 that I probably didn't even... Maybe this is my 40, 50, and 60, like, <laughs> catch it up to me. I don't know. But, uh, and some people will laugh at me now, right? Because there's people that watch me that are uh, older than I am. I think age is just a number. But at the same time, I kind of get it that life is not infinite within this one expression of Chris, you know, and so I better be doing what I'm going to do while I'm here. So <laughs> thoughts like that have, have just been driving me nuts lately, you know. I can't escape them. You know, I just want to sit under a tree and really kind of think in a higher level or way, you know, about uh, what I might be wanting to emphasize, you know, for the next 20 years or however, or the next two years or whatever I have left, you know. So that's what's on my mind. <laughs> and every, I just, I beg forgiveness from everybody that I've written letters to because first it was the hot weather and then it was the roofing issue. And, and, you know, let's hope that it'll be a lot of, you know, pens and inks and fun stuff that, you know, from now till the end of the year. It seems I get locked onto a subject, though, and I just can't get off it, so <clears throat> there is that, but but with all these pretty inks and pens and and all the, the fun of um, kind of exploring them and bringing you along with me, um, there hasn't been just a whole lot of, of retail therapy, so to speak, this year. I, I did buy the ink vent. Um, I did purchase the Twisby Eco Rosso, which I was not going to get, but I still had money in my um, pen account. And I just, when I saw that that was the Ferrari red, I was like, oh, I have to have that pen in a broad nib. You know, I just, these kinds of things are, are just something else. But now my pen case is full. My, my Twisby pen case is full of Ecos, so... It is full, so that that begs the question: What's next? You know, <laughs> how do you how do you continue to curate a collection and uh, keep it reasonable, keep it the you know the way I want it to? But that those are subjects I think for another video, another time, because I'm I'm really working on a special inventory project, and it leads up to some of these thoughts that have been really helping me recently to not really. Um, search out new things in the hobby and I'm I'm happy with that I'm I'm happy because I don't want to be greedy and I don't want to have the excess to the level where I'm uncomfortable at all and uh, so it's it all kind of fits together you know um, to staying continuing in in not only writing letters but making videos and staying in the um, community and the process of all of this without uh, doing it exactly the same way as I did the first couple of years where uh, I just there's words that probably will get me blocked but you know <laughs> I was crazy with my uh, you know continuously purchasing this you know more of the same one color will get you every time that's for sure but <laughs> okay I think that's it for now I'm I'm kind of I'm ready for the ink vent 
And in another sense, I'm nervous about it, as I alluded to when I showed you that Lockby um, booklet. Like, uh, I was trying to see, well, what did you do last year? You know, was it awful or was it good? And, and uh, I'm trying not to decide ahead of time how I'm going <clears> to <throat> actually deal with the with the ink vent, I just know I'm going to be making the little uh, tiles for each one. I'll make a set for me and a set for Matt for inkswatch.com. And beyond that, I have a blank little journal. And this time it's a goulet, like those little Lockby ones. And we'll just see how it unfolds. December can be very um, <coughs> busy. And the weather can be really roller coastery. Like it might actually keep us inside if it's raining like cats and dogs. Or it might be so beautiful that we just have to be out under a tree or out in the park. So we'll just kind of play it by ear. But uh, the only thing I've solidly committed to absolutely is to making those tiles and just exploring the inks in whatever way, you know, comes to me. Um, I will say that I love to splash the ink on the page. And so if, if it comes to it, then splashing and labeling it and, you know... Uh, Using any number of my dip pens would be an option too, but I haven't wanted to commit myself to a specific format just yet. So you'll be just as surprised as I am. So, <laughs> okay, I've got to get this uploading because it's uh, 51 minutes and I will see you on the next video. Do let me know in the comments what you're up to for, um, you know, for the rest of November and for December, if you have pen pen plans or if you have uh, things that are working out really good for inks and pens I'd love to hear about it and thank you very much for watching your continued um, presence here is very much appreciated and I'll see you later bye